Hey guys, Axel Flurry Fleur here. Today I'm bringing you my top 10 favorite YouTubers. Now before we get that started, I want to make a few announcements. I do finally have a new laptop. It's my own. It's what I'm using right now. And the reason I don't have my glasses on is because the backlight on my webcam is leaving this really weird glare on my glasses. So there's no glasses today. Um, another thing to get out of the way is... I have a lot of real-life friends who are YouTubers who do content, post way more often than I have recently, but they will not be on this list purely because I wanted to keep this list as unbiased as possible. And the reason I'm doing it as a vlog, this is my last announcement, then we'll actually get started with the video, is I had got onto Twitter and I had asked various YouTubers for permission to use either their image or some video footage of, from their channel so this video can be a bit more appealing than my face. But only one YouTuber had gotten back to me and given me permission to use their image, so I didn't want just their image to be all over the place and trying to find images that had uh, worked with it. So that's why we're doing the vlog today. Um, hopefully, oh, plus some weird editing problems with the program I'm using. I don't know why it's being stupid, but hopefully that will be fixed soon. But with that out of the way, let's get started at number 10, Yuri of Wind. Now, if you don't know who this YouTuber is, go check out their channels. Everyone on this list, link to their channel is going to be in the description. But if you don't know this YouTuber, it's kind of not surprising. And I'll get to that in a minute. The reason I like the channel is because they do something new and kind of old at the same time. Uh, kind of new being the uh, doing uh, gaming videos where they talk, where the YouTuber, where he talks about uh, things that were originally going to be in a game that were seen during uh, a trailer or during before it was its final release. And the creepypasta thing, I still consider creepypastas to be new because I didn't really get into them until after I was in high school and done with college. So that's kind of my new, and he does a lot of, video, most of his creepypastas are gaming creepypastas, mostly just, actually I think all of his, yeah, all of his creepypasta videos have been uh, creepypastas, they're called bullshit creepypastas. Uh, those are the reasons I'm drawn to his channel, is the bullshit creepypastas mostly, actually only reason. Sometimes if there's a gaming mystery video where he talks about something that could have been in the game that isn't, if it's a part of a franchise that I actually enjoy, then I'll go watch that video. But the reason I don't like his channel is he doesn't upload very often. I'm not entirely sure why, but if you're not constantly uploading something or some uploading something regularly enough, um, you're not going to get my attention you're not going to get my views or as many views as you know the top five in this list are going to get um yes i'm sitting down by my door don't ask me why besides the point at number nine we have jay wits jay wits is a pokemon youtuber the thing i like or liked about his channel is i love his trading card tuesdays where he would play the pokemon trading card game on the official website or program, whatever you want to call it. And it kind of got me wanting to get back into the Pokemon trading card game. Uh, the reason I stopped watching his channel is because he stopped putting the trade. Oh, another thing I liked about his channel was he w he played some video, some Pokemon games that I kind of wanted to got go out and buy. And I want to know if the game was really worth it and see what's inside and make sure it's worth my money, blah, 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 like XD Gale of Darkness and I want to say Coliseum, I think that's what it's called for the GameCube. I could be wrong. But the reasons I don't like watch this channel as much anymore, I'm still sub to all these people, by the way. So if I say I don't like them, I'm still sub to them. Okay, getting that out of the way. But the reason I don't watch too many of his videos anymore is because I miss his trading card Tuesdays being on YouTube. To my knowledge, he had moved them over to Twitch. And to my knowledge, I could be horribly wrong on this, is I need to be on Twitch watching his account the same time he's on playing it in order for me to be able to watch the content. My schedule is really, really weird. I start work in the middle of the afternoon, like early morning 
early morning, beginning of the afternoon, and I get out like mid-afternoon, and then I go and take care of the other things I need to get done throughout the day. So by the time I get home, it's like 7 o'clock at night, and I don't think that's the time he uploads, at least for 7 o'clock my time. I'm here in Utah, so it's it's a bit of a miss. And on Tuesdays now, I'm going to be going to the gym every Tuesday, so I'm definitely not going to be able to be watching any of his content. <laughs> well, for trading, Trading Card Tuesday, unless it's on YouTube where I can go back and like, okay, I'm just getting home. Oh, he uploaded a new video like an hour ago. Okay, fine, perfect. But that's why I no longer watch his channel. At number eight, uh, Tamashi Hiroka. Uh, the reason I like Tamashi is, this is going to sound really, really horrible. Sorry, I'm going to fix my hair really fast. Make sure everyone knows I actually have hair. Uh, the reason I like her channel, this is going to sound really, really horrible, and I don't want it to sound horrible. I don't want to sound offensive. I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm not trying to be mean. But she's one of the few female YouTube create content creators that I actually can find. And she's one of the few that I can find that I actually like. In fact, I've only found like f three female YouTube gamers. And... She's the only one I really, really like. The other two, I was really good friends with one of them, but we had a fallout because our various, our different opinions on how the Pokemon games should be played, and it's really unfortunate, but that's besides the point. This is about Tamashi right now. Uh, that's And the, that's not the main reason I like her. The reason is she's kind of chill about everything. She plays video games that most people didn't even know exist, at least to my knowledge. Like, she'll play a whole bunch of, like, Game Boy Color games, some SP games, to my knowledge. So it's nice seeing something a little bit new and kind of different. And she does seem like a really sweet girl. Um, the thing, thing or things I don't like about her channel is she doesn't upload very often. And I know she has a whole bunch of stuff going on in her personal life, so she's kind of getting a pass on this one. But... That's pretty much it. She just doesn't upload enough for me to constantly, like, oh, I wonder if she's uploaded anything, because she just doesn't upload very often. So if I see something new, yeah, I'll probably go check it out. But I haven't explained this, but in my head, I have, like, this weird grading scale with some of these YouTubers. Like, would I go out and hang out with these people, or if they're just somebody like, oh, cool, I met them at a con. Uh, Thomas She is definitely one of those people I would definitely wouldn't mind, like, hang out with saying hey do you want to go grab a bite to eat no not a date go play pokemon go or something just chill random party woo but that's pretty much it for number eight number seven we have cinemassacre slash angry video game nerd so the thing i like about cinemassacre slash angry video game nerd Something I probably should have had mentioned in the beginning of the video is I don't remember how I came across most of these YouTubers in any of them. I do not remember. But the thing I like about his channel or cha is channels is um, I'm not a huge horror movie fan, but it's nice to see like some of the classics and see his review on it. And then I can say, oh, well, maybe that's something I'll go and pick up and watch. I kind of want to watch a few more horror movies. I'm not entirely sure why, but meh. Um, but I also love his, okay, I shouldn't say love, but I kind of get a kick out of his persona, the angry video game nerd for when he does gaming videos. Um, the thing I like it when he's the angry video game nerd is because he'll play like a lot of like retro classic games or even games a lot of us may not have even heard of. But the thing I don't like about the angry video game nerd is he says fucking shit a lot. I, obviously, I don't mind swearing because I just swore in front of you twice, and I'm sure I've sworn like nine of my videos. So, but it's just it's the constant, sort of like a one trick pony, and that's kind of it's kind of boring to me. Other people can enjoy it. I find it low brown, not because he swears, but because he does it constantly and it's the same swear word and it just seems sort of just like a cheap filler so at number six actually i kind of regret that oh number six we have the nostalgia critic okay another youtuber who if i had met kind of hesitant on whether or not i'd want to hang out with him he seems cool on camera but i've also read of uh, vlogs where he's kind of like a nasty person off camera so kind of a hit and a miss 
But the reason I like his channel, okay, I like his older work, and this was before YouTube started cracking down on you on content creators, because he'd be able to show us clips from the footage, from the video, not video, movie. I'm so sorry, guys. Obviously, I'm rusty on this. But the editing seemed a little bit better, and he had way more leniency in order to be creative. And now with the new YouTube rules cracking down really, really hard on everybody, he can't do as much, and it kind of restrains him. So that's kind of why I don't like him. What I do like him is he would talk about... Oh, another thing I don't like about him, he's going to be the only one I do in reverse for some odd reason, is he's doing newer movies. The reason of being called Nostalgia Critic is talking about older movies, but he's done a review on After Earth, the new Ghostbusters movie, just a lot of new movies. I liked it before when he was able to, you know, review older movies and have a lot more to work with, but his flaws are not his own. That's because YouTube is being really, really stupid to us right now. Well, by us, I mean content creators. Yes, I consider myself a content creator because obviously I have videos. At number five, we have Cybertron Zhang. Uh, the reason I like Cybertron Zhang is because back during, I want to say X and Y, I wanted to get into Pokemon doubles. He's definitely somebody I would want to hang out with and say, hey, do you want to go grab a bite to eat my treat? He he just seems like a really cool dude. I actually had a, a conversation with him once back during X and Y. He was looking for a Clefable, and I actually had one, and I sent him over the Clefable. It was actually my first experience talking with a really, really big... Uh, Poketuber or any YouTube icon that's well known. So that was really, really cool. And the things I like about him is he kind of inspired me to get into doubles for Pokemon. And he kind of had creative teams. He was always trying out something new. Each week he would showcase a new Pokemon. So it would be able to give me ideas because I play mostly singles. Okay. Yeah, mostly singles unless somebody wants a multi battle. But. He was a he kind of inspired me. That was really, really cool. And for such a young age and get that far in the Pokemon Masters ranks, that's really amazing. So he's he's really cool, really, really humble. I think the only thing I don't like about his channel, it is completely my fault. It is not anything on him or his channel. It's completely me. But it is a sort of uh actual Gen 6 kind of just became old and stale. And so most of his videos are battle videos that he has as he's laddering so he can, you know, go to regionals, nationals, and worlds and stuff like that. But because the games kind of got boring and they're going to be boring for another month, son of a god damn it, come out now. But because Gen 6 is super old now, super stale, um, there really isn't much for me to see on his channel because I kind of, I know pretty much what the major powerhouse and what everyone's playing on, in doubles. So that's pretty much the only reason. As soon as Gen 6 comes out, chances are I will go back to his channel and start watching his videos again. At number, I want to say four, I'm so sorry. I have a list. It's just on the other end of my room and I don't want to grab it and re-record this because it's like my fifth attempt, and I want to get this out as soon as possible. But I want to say the fourth slot goes to uh, Peanut Butter Gamer. Um, he was actually going to be lower on the list, but because I just just now remembered that he was even on the list, he's going to kind of be up here. So what we're going to do is mentally, we're going to swap the Nostalgia Critic and PBG and Peanut Butter Gamer. But the reasons I like Peanut Butter Gamer is I actually really can't think of a reason. I mean, I like his content. I really don't know how to describe it. I like it when I like it when he does the PB and Jeff videos. Those are my favorite. When he does the small little less plays, they just finished Pikmin. But I think I like it when he plays like those games that nobody would ever give the time of day to, like the Sims games for the Wii. Pretty much any non-major title Wii game. Uh, they played... Um, I'm trying to... The thing with the suit... K, deal or no deal. And they would print him and his friend Jeff. I don't know how they know each other, so I'm just going to say friend... Jeff isn't on the channel all the time, which is why Peanut Butter Gamer is on this list. 
But I like it when they play those underrated games. Uh, they just finished Pikmin, and I thought that was interesting because I never knew what Pikmin was about. But those are the reasons I enjoy the game. Well, enjoy his channel. I'm sorry that my eyes look really, really close. I don't know why they keep doing that. I swear I'm awake. I guess I just have really slanted eyes, not to be horribly insensitive. But the things I don't like about his channel is mostly from his older stuff that I started watching when I was introduced to his channel. Uh, he would have like a 12-minute video, and maybe like two-thirds of it would be filler of him like running around in some foresty area or him just staring off into a sunset or something. And I thought that was really, really boring. I came to see you play a video game and talk about it, not watching you have a soul-searching moment. So go have your weird moment elsewhere. At number three, we have Shofu. Uh, the things I really, really like about Shofu is he really... He introduced me to the awesomeness of VGC... I mean, not VGC, of Pokemon Singles. And I love his Pokemon uh, Let's Play videos. I love it when he plays fan-made games. I like it when... Uh, there's, he's definitely the first person I go to watch to for Pokemon news because I love watching him get hyped because it's ridiculously funny and you can't be pumped more than this guy can. Like you can wake up like super super lazy, tired and groggy, and watch one of his new Sun and Moon videos like when he does news on it, and then you're immediately like caffeinated for like nine hours. He's like a five hour energy drink, but for your eyes. Um, things I don't like about his channel is he I could be horribly wrong I'm pretty sure he's a decent human being in like in real life but he kind of comes off as um, I'm all that in a bag of Doritos personality and that kind of just rubs me the wrong way um, kind of like oh yeah I'm cool yeah I have subs but whatever and to me, to be a content creator and to have as many as he does, I feel like you should spend time um, acknowledging your subs. I mean, I don't bug him nearly as often as the number two slot, but I would like to see him give back to the community a bit more, the community that put him to where he's at. Like, if you watch his earlier videos, like, he would barely talk or he'd have a really silent video, and now... And now he is how he is today, and I feel like it's because of the subs, and I feel like he should or could go back and uh, say, hey, thanks, at least every now and again. But enough of that. He's a cool YouTuber. I love watching his videos. I'm always excited when he has a new video. I definitely sit down and watch it. Even if I'm at work, I'll watch a Jovu video. But moving on to number two, Joey PokeAmeMD definitely deserves a number two slot for tons of reasons. He, first of all, he's definitely somebody who, if this didn't sound really weird or really creepy slash fanboyish, um, he would definitely be somebody I'd want to hang out with. He's definitely somebody I'd want to actually like talk to. I've talked to him very, very brief messages on Twitter. In fact, he was the YouTuber who actually said, yeah, I can use his image from, from YouTube. But he's really cool. He's always taking teams from his fans to use on his videos. He's a great battler. I love watching his Let's Play videos. I'm watching. I'm rewatching all of his Nuzlocke videos uh, just for filler until Sun and Moon comes out. I'm currently on Gold. We're nearly. We're just starting on the Elite Four. But he's a really cool guy. Really cool battler. He's always give i don't know if he's always giving back to the community but he always acknowledges his fans he's always talking about how amazing his fans are and eventually i'm going to get me a drop a draco hoodie i think he's i don't know if he's the shirts are going to come back i know everyone's begging for the hoodies which is why the hoodies are always coming back i just need to man up get me a hoodie start dropping some dracos all over the place <laughs> But it's really cool. He's talked. He's replied to some of my tweets. He's retweeted some of my tweets. So he's really, really cool. So I feel like he really decides to give back to the community, or acknowledges his fan base. Uh, the thing I don't like about his channel, and again, this is not on any of the YouTubers' faults or on Joey's faults, but I'd kind of like to see him play a fan-made Pokemon game and see if he can do better than Shofu. 
I'm sure he could. Yeah, I'm spitting fire at Shofu now. <laughs> but that's pretty much it. I'd like to see him just do more fan-made Pokemon games. I know that's probably not going to happen purely because he's a competitive battler, so there's no reason for him to go and play fan-made Pokemon games, but it would be really interesting to see how he how well he does. And now we're on to the Coupe de Grasse, the Big Cheese, number one, Markiplier. If you guys didn't see Markiplier coming on this list, then I don't know what to tell you. What is there to not like about Markiplier? He's constantly giving back to the community. He's constantly doing charity live streams to help people who in need. Um, the biggest one, the one I loved the most was the uh, I, suicide prevention one because depression and suicide is something I've dealt with my entire life. In fact, I was in the hospital um, earlier this week for suicide for a suicide attempt. Obviously, I'm alive. So that's the point. But he's also really, really funny. I love when he does Let's Play videos. I love his small little skits. I love his videos with Chica. I just love everything that he does. Um, the only thing I don't like about uh, his channel is not there's really nothing I don't like about his channel. He's a great human being. He's definitely somebody I'd want to hang out with. He's definitely somebody I'd want to meet. He's definitely he he's all kinds of awesome. And I'm sorry I keep picking up my face. I'm itching for some reason, and I don't appreciate it at all. But. Those are my top 10 uh, YouTube YouTubers. Um, one last announcement. Um, you know, I'm not going to do the announcement yet, but I guys hope, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if a YouTuber you like didn't make it on the list, I apologize. If you guys are angry at my video for some reason or another, this is just my opinion from either person. Again, it's just my personal opinion. That's all there is to it. I don't have to explain anything. The list is how it is because of how it is. I didn't go into great detail on a lot of it, but these are my top 10 favorite YouTubers. Now to the last announcement. I'm working on a Pokemon Leaf Green Let's Play, and hopefully I should have a video with that up in the next week or two. I just have to get some recording issues fixed before I start doing anything because I will not be able to go back to my Fire Red Let's Play. Just so you know, Leaf Green will be randomized, not a Nuzlocke. Sorry, Joey, I'm not as amazing as you. So I hope you guys had a good time, and I will see you guys in the future. Bye!